wake up, babe. Someone in the mainstream finance media has just discovered that Tesla has a massive cost advantage when it comes to autonomous vehicles. Tesla's vehicle cost is about one seventh of Waymo's. Why were you so focused on that, Steve? Well, I think I think it's a critical piece in getting it on a commercial basis, on a mass scale basis. And also, you know, the payback is also important. If you can produce the cars at a fraction of the price, uh, look, you can get more of these vehicles out on the road. And also, um, you know, whoever's running them can actually make their money back much sooner. So you guys know what quantum entanglement is, right? Good. And if you don't, sorry, too bad. My brain's kind of in an entangled state right now both completely shocked and absolutely not at all surprised that it's taken this long for anyone in the mainstream finance media for the penny to drop. How long have I been banging the drum on this? Tesla's massive cost advantage for the hardware. Now, that's not the only point. They also have superior technology and their strategy for scaling. Don't get me started. But just on the hardware cost, this is the first time I've heard anybody in the finance media discuss Tesla's massive cost advantage. And when I say massive, I mean like so big, will make your 800 pound girlfriend look petite. Seven X roughly difference in cost. That's within spitting distance of an order of magnitude price differential for the hardware. We're not talking about Tesla having a vehicle they could put on roads to operate autonomously for a 10 or 15% lower cost, which itself would be a killer advantage. Not half the cost, which would be unbeatable. Not a quarter the cost, one seventh, roughly 15% the cost of a Waymo. Now, the reason this matters, which we can deduce from Tesla's master plan, is that their mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. The fastest way for them to do that is to solve autonomy and scale up massively due to the higher utilization rates of autonomous vehicles versus a personally owned vehicle. An autonomous vehicle, e.g. a robotaxi, is going to be operating probably 12 plus hours a day, whereas a personally owned vehicle is going to be parked at home or in the car parking lot at a job most of the day both on weekends and weekdays, sitting around doing approximately fuck all. So Tesla's biggest return on investment in terms of something that's directly in line with their mission is autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, because every one of these vehicles on roads operating autonomously is going to do at least five times as many miles as a personally owned vehicle. But the only way for Tesla to truly achieve their mission is to, as fast as possible, drive the actual cost per mile down. So initially, people who can afford to use a taxi, an Uber, or a Lyft, can use a Tesla Robotaxi. But Tesla won't stop there. Their mission statement makes it very clear what they're going to do. They will drive their cost per mile down to use their Robotaxi service as fast as they reasonably can while maintaining a reasonable profit margin and ensuring that wait times don't get stupidly long. That's it. Given this inevitable fact, what happens if you're a company like Waymo and you're competing with a company like Tesla who can put an equivalent vehicle on roads for one seventh the cost and will aggressively drive their cost per mile to use the service down as they can meet demand and keep wait times in check. The answer to this question is you must follow them on pricing or you go out of business because transport as a service is, keyword there, a service, just like an internet provider or an electricity provider or a gas provider. 95% of people give zero fucks who is providing this service if it is equivalent and the best value. Now, I don't know if the folks in the finance media will quite have joined the dots yet, but I will spell it out for you. Unless a miracle occurs, and I'm talking like the flying spaghetti monster waves around a noodly appendage and suddenly reality changes, Waymo's fucked. And then the question you would ask is, well, how could Waymo not be fucked? And the answer would be if they had expertise in mass manufacturing, compelling electric vehicles at the same scale as Tesla, with the same cost basis as Tesla, and in addition already had eight plus million existing vehicles capable of autonomy with the over-the-air software update on roads. The issue you really highlight is the lack of production of real vehicles by Waymo versus yeah. Tesla that just has hundreds of thousands of millions on the road already. Is that the key dividing factor here, Steve? Uh, that's one key dividing factor. I think technology is also important. I, I, look, I don't want to discount Waymo's uh, technology. I think you know they have, have had a number of cars on the road it's working. Uh, 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 you know, there's always going to be some issues here and there. Uh, but look, I think uh, if you look at Tesla's technology and their approach with using right. cameras, it's just much easier to scale. Uh, and especially now, if you look at uh, the recent news, you know, the, the Chinese are actually opening up the market, opening up the market for them 
and allowing them to uh, you know, export some of that uh, data, training data, out of China, uh, that's, that's, a huge, that's a huge win for, for Tesla and, and, and scaling over the long term. So, I mean, lots of fair points here, and my brain is still in an entangled state. Not surprised that it's taken this long for the finance media to realise Tesla's massive cost advantage, but also shocked. How can they possibly, how does it take this long? I'm mean, saying the same thing day in, day out now for years. So here's Ed of Doomberg, who conducted this interview, adding this today. An interesting table comparing Tesla, Waymo, Uber, and Lyft, who some experts, quote unquote, especially experts who are managing people's money, claim will all have their own autonomous vehicles, and their own robot taxi service, and all will be competing competitively, keyword there, somehow, on cost, with Tesla. So, of these companies, who has car manufacturing capability? Answer, only Tesla. So if you don't have the capability to manufacture vehicles, someone else has to do that and they're not going to do it for free, meaning you're already at a massive disadvantage in terms of cost. Furthermore, Tesla has the lowest production cost of compelling electric vehicles with sufficient safety features of any company on earth today. So it's a double whammy here because whoever you go to, unless Tesla's making your robot taxis for you, is themselves going to have a massive cost disadvantage in terms of producing a vehicle to sell to you. Each of these companies will have their own platform, e.g. the right hail app. Let's skip ahead to the juicy part. Data collected since launch. Tesla, 3 billion miles. Waymo, 22 million miles. Uber and Lyft, zero because they don't actually have any vehicles on roads collecting data because they don't actually have any robot taxis on roads. Now, I want to give you guys an example of something. So 22 million versus 3 billion. Let's try and put that in context. How many years is 22 million seconds the answer is not even one 0.7 years anyone want to guess how many years is 3 billion seconds ready 95.1 years almost a century versus 0.7 of a single year we're almost this far into 2025 if we go back in time 95 years we're like in the 1930s as in literally 1930 this is a big deal now interestingly there are some estimates for fleet size by 2026. Currently, by the way, Waymo has a fleet of 1,500 vehicles approximately. Doomberg Intelligence estimating Tesla's fleet in 2026 at 35,000 vehicles versus 2,000 for Waymo. Now, if you guys watched my video a couple of days ago where Grok explained like he was stupid some of the possible financial implications for Tesla's fleet, I actually covered some numbers that weren't far off this based on very conservative estimates. A full-time fleet of Tesla Robotaxis of around 35,000 could easily be doing somewhere in the vicinity of $1 billion in profit per year. However, I just want to take a moment here because I've been telling you guys this for so long. You're probably immune to it now. But this is data from Bloomberg Intelligence. And their own estimates have Tesla's fleet growing from zero currently to 35,000 by end of 26. And during that same period, Waymo going from 1,500 to 2,000. Imagine what their estimates for 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5 would look like. Look at this difference. Even Doomberg seemed to get it. Key information here, other than the massive cost advantage Tesla has and the huge data advantage, is how insanely fast Tesla's fleet can scale. So the guest on Doomberg explains Tesla can put a vehicle on roads, same capabilities, roughly one seventh the cost. And Doomberg themselves are estimating by end of next year, Tesla's fleet's about seven and a half times that of Waymo. Not far off an order of magnitude cost advantage for the hardware and not far off an order of magnitude advantage in terms of fleet size. And that's literally over the next approximately 18 months. Do the math. And it wasn't done. More from Doomberg Intelligence. The crash rate comparison analysis. Tesla's self-driving technology could be safer than Waymo's. No shit, Sherlock. Given its vast mileage data collected. If their crash rate methodologies are comparable, Tesla reports about 0.15 crash per million miles driven versus Waymo's average of 1.16. And what do you fucking know? We're now looking again, not far off that order of magnitude differential. I think this chart sums things up quite nicely. Now, what's important to understand is the way that this software gets better, aka safer, is more data and more training. And uh, again, look at the staggering differential in terms of data collection, Tesla versus Waymo. That analogy 0.7 of one year versus almost a century. Now you can argue about the methodology here, but put that to the side. Tesla's insane data advantage will give them a huge advantage in terms of capabilities, which translates to safety. 
I just wanted to wrap up today's video by emphasizing how hilarious it is to see the massive lag factor between inevitable and obvious, at least to some people, and the same inevitable fact, the same data, the same hypothesis appearing literally years later in the mainstream finance media. This is the story of Tesla's life. If you can see around a corner, it seems like you have years of additional visibility in where this company's heading and the competitive landscape giving you a massive informational advantage as a potential Tesla investor. Can't wait to hear what they're telling us about humanoid robots a few years from now. Like Tesla has a massive unassailable cost advantage. They're the only company that's essentially sold vision via the vehicles which are transplanted into the robot. It's going to scale massively. It's a very low risk product to put onto real jobs in the real world under real conditions because the stakes aren't as high as autonomous vehicles which can literally kill people. A robot, if it fumbles or drops something cool, it's a bit unproductive, it's annoying, it's slow. Meaning humanoid robots are going to scale way faster than people realize. They're going to print crazy money and it will massively scale the global labor market and be the biggest product of all time. In fact, the final product. I'm just saying this stuff now again, which I've been saying for a few years now, just so it's once again on the record. And when we finally hear about that a few years from now, somebody remind me to dig up what I just said. Go, oh, really? I'm so surprised. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. I told you this years ago. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.